Alrighty, well welcome back to another video. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's gusting like crazy out here. So today I have a slightly different video plan. You guys have been asking me questions, and one I've been getting quite consistently here is what spearfishing gear I use and what spear gun I've been using at the rigs when we are going spearfishing. So today I'm gonna to talk about that, give you guys the rundown, basic gear, gear I recommend and why I use the gear. I'm also gonna emphasize the spear gun I use, which is a Rob Allen roller spear gun. I'm gonna go into detail about that. And on top of that, we are gonna do a challenge. I have Fisher here today. We're gonna to get in the pool and do a little accuracy competition. Whoever shoots the most accurately is gonna be the winner. The loser is gonna to have to drink a concoction um, made by the winner. Anything you wanna put in it can go in the cup. The loser only has to take a shot of it though. So that is the plan. Just to spice the video up a little bit, we're gonna do the little accuracy challenge here. Just to also demonstrate the accuracy of the Rob Allen roller guns and show you guys how they shoot. Um, just kind of show the lack of recoil as well. So that's the plan, pretty basic video. Um, but yeah, before we get into the pool, I'm gonna give you guys the rundown on my spear fishing gear and my spear gun. So check it out. All right, so I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, run over everything and just give you guys the gist of what I'm using and why I'm using it. So to start, probably the most important thing you can have spear fishing and diving is a good mask. This is an Octomask Freediver. I use it just because I gotta have a GoPro up there. The reason I use it is because it's got a steel frame here and the weight of this actually counteracts the weight of the GoPro. It prevents my mask from leaking. So if you guys are looking for a mask that you can put a GoPro on, Octomask Freediver, I'll have the links in the description. Um, if you're not gonna film with a GoPro or you're gonna use a head strap, I'd recommend the, uh, what is it, the Cressy Sfera mask. That's a really good freediving mask or Mari's has a good one. I'll put some in the description below you can check out. Uh, but that's the mask. I just have a strap from my local dive shop. If you can get like a little neoprene, uh, back strap it really helps it just doesn't tug on your hair like the ones that come out of the box as far as the snorkel goes standard j tube flexible snorkel from neptonics i'll leave the link in the description keep it simple you don't really need the purge valve and all that stuff just a nice cheap easy simple snorkel i've had no problems with it next thing up this is very important glove so a lot of people don't really know this but for spear fishing you're probably going to want a dyneema glove i've tried neoprene and just those thin um, warm water gloves and nothing compares to these. These are Dyneema or Kevlar gloves. You can find them on a lot of different websites, but all the companies practically use the same manufacturer, so I'll leave that one down below as well. These are the Hatch gloves, and I think when I bought them, they're like 10 bucks, so very affordable. And they do last, I get like a year out of them, um, but that's just because I'm pretty brutal on my gear. But uh, overall, these will last longer than any other glove. After that, I guess I'll just go over what's in my dive bag. If you guys don't have a dive bag, I'd recommend it. Something with mesh so it will drain all the water out since everything that's going to go in here at the end of the day is going to be very, very wet. For whenever I wear my fins, I like to put on socks. I actually just have two sets of socks. Standard ankle sock. I just got these from my local dive shop. You can order some online too. I don't know the brand on these, but these right here, these are inside out right now. These are shark skins, I believe. I really like these as well because they go up your ankle. And the fin I actually use is, you can see it right there, Carbonio GFT from Neptonics.com. And I actually do have a reef runner fin skin on here, not because of the looks, just to protect the fin blade. We dive the oil rigs, and if you can see, there's a lot of scratches on there. And don't have one on this side, so there's a few on there. But yeah, the main reason I have this is just to prevent scratches on the actual carbon fiber. But overall, if you can get a carbon fiber blade, I definitely recommend it. They're a lot lighter than a plastic fin, um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you can use will work. I just like these because it takes a little bit less effort to kick around. The next thing, my wetsuit. This is pretty basic. It's inside out as well. This is just a scuba wetsuit, Henderson from my dive shop. Um, if you are gonna get a wetsuit for free diving, probably go with an open cell suit. Um, Rife, I have a Rife open cell, but I don't really wear that at the rigs so when I'm diving in the summertime since the water is so warm. Some people ask me why I wear a wetsuit even when the water is like 75 degrees. And the main reason for that is number one, safety. It provides buoyancy at the surface. If you do have a blackout, you're gonna probably stay neutral or float up, opposed to sinking like a rock. And the other thing is whenever we're diving past 60, 70 feet, there's a real harsh thermocline. And uh, without that wetsuit, you're gonna get pretty chilly really fast. So. That is the wetsuit. Over the wetsuit, I typically wear, the sleeves are tucked in, but this is the rash guard I wear. I wear this for camouflage mainly, and it has a little loading pad right there, just to grip on my spear gun when I'm chest loading. 
This is pretty basic on Amazon and I've had it for four or five years so works really well especially when you're not wearing a wetsuit it just provides an extra layer of protection from jellyfish and uh, the barnacles on the rig stuff like that so next thing up is your weight belt um, this is a rubber weight belt Rob Allen um, I got my dive knife you definitely need a dive knife if you're gonna be spear fishing if you need to cut the line in an emergency and to brain the fish so this is a salvimar I wouldn't recommend this one though because I, I can't get this thing sharp to save my life. What is the one you have? Blue tang. Fisher has a blue tang titanium one and his seems to cut like butter opposed to this one. So if you guys can get that one, um, I'd go for that. Or I've heard the red tide spearfishing knife is really sharp. The only thing I don't like about it is the sheath. Keep in mind when you're looking at a spearfishing knife, this one, this is like the only thing I really like about this knife is that the sheath just clips the knife in. No hassle, no clips you gotta put over. I can easily just pull the knife out whenever I need it and clip it back in. So a lot of the other knives you'll actually have to um, put a rubber strap over the knife. The reason I don't like that is in the case that you do need your knife really fast, you're down deep and you need to cut a line, you're tangled up or something like that. It's just one less step you're gonna have to, to make when you're trying to get your knife out. So instead of having to unstrap your knife, you can just pull it out, cut the line and get back up. So that is the knife. I just wear a pound. I sink like a rock, so I don't think I've ever seen anyone with less than a pound with full wetsuit on. But yeah, that is that. Other thing I have is a Rob Allen belt reel. I put this on my, my weight belt. The reason I have this mainly is in case my spear gun uh, reel line gets tangled up. Um, it doesn't happen a whole lot, but every once in a while you'll get a line tangle in the band in the muzzle area. So I have that for that reason. And in the case when I'm blue water diving or shooting a really large fish, this has come in real handy. So that is why I carry that. Just kind of like a safety precaution and um, backup reel in case I do shoot like a giant kingfish or something like that. So this is the gear, the basic gear that I use at the oil rigs, mainly just rig diving 70, 80 feet with reels, no float lines or anything like that. I can make a separate blue water spear gun and spear fishing setup video another time, but this is just the basic gear um, I use at the rig. So. so with this stuff covered, we can get into the spear guns. I typically take two spear guns offshore when we go just to have a spare, a backup gun, and in the case that someone else's gun fails or a band pops. Um, this is my backup gun most of the time unless the water is super murky, and I use the Scunty Jetties. It is a Rife Metal Tech 1. It's got an 8 mil shaft, three bands on there to punch through the bigger fish and uh, a Rife Reel. 38 inch Rife Metal Tech 1. This gun is really good for the jetties and very low visibility. Like I said, it's my backup gun when the water is clear. When the water is clear at the rigs, I like to use a 100 centimeter Rob Allen roller spear gun. You guys have been asking me about this. Um, it's pretty basic. Uh, this is probably one of your cheaper spear guns, but it's also one of the most reliable guns you can get. They're made in South Africa. Everything is made in house and they're just built to last. I've had this thing for five years, beat it up. I've never really taken care of it. I guess as you say, I, I should. I don't really rinse it off and I just kind of throw it around. Um, basics of the gun, it's a Rob Allen Tuna, 100 centimeter. They just have 1,000 on the side. Simple safety on the top. I run a 7.5 millimeter shaft with 1.7 millimeter Dyneema shooting line. And then I have a Rob Allen reel. This is probably one of my favorite reels on the market just because I have this reinforced line guide. A lot of the spear gun reels that I've seen just have a simple, what seems like a wire line guide right here. And that tends to bend um, if there's any pressure on it. So that's one of the main reasons I like this reel. And it's just, it's durable and it slides right onto the gun. You can pop it on and off. And in the case that you do need to drop your reel, um, you can just punch it and it'll pop right off the back. That is the reel and rear end of the gun. On the muzzle end, I put a Manny Sub roller on here aftermarket. Rob Allen actually makes from roller muzzle now. so. There's no need to uh, buy this one and put it on if you're gonna get one or if you're in the market yourself. Um, I'm running 14.5 mil bands. This is a 100 centimeter gun, so I have them cut to 50 centimeters and then I just stretch them down to the line anchor right there. That uh, specification is actually for the 16 mil bands. Um, Rob Allen's website um, recommends 16 mil bands at half the length of the spear gun barrel and then the rest. Uh, the pretension is going to be the remaining um, length of the gun. But yeah, that's the setup. Just running the basic flopper shaft 7.5. And uh, this is my main rig diving gun. I don't think I've used, I haven't used any other gun at the rigs all summer. Um, and this thing is, it's done the trick. So yeah, that is my basic spearfishing um, loadout. 
the gear I take offshore every rig trip. I don't take any more or any less. Um, yeah, it's pretty basic. Hopefully that helps out those of you who are asking um, about the gear I use and kind of what I recommend as far as spearfishing gear. So if you are looking for some gear, hopefully this kind of helps you out. Gives you a guideline on what to look for in your spearfishing equipment. And uh, yeah, hopefully that helps. And I guess we'll hop into the pool and show you guys the accuracy of the Rob Allens. All right, well, we are ready to go. Get my mask on here. About to load up my spear gun. You ready? Yeah. Let's see. Let's aim at the end, the letter N. Letter N. Yeah, it's a little bit higher than the target, but. All right, so we have decided we're gonna aim at the letter N, and we put a marker down to the spot that our hands cannot pass. Fisher's gun is a little bit longer than mine, uh, but we're just not gonna count that. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna see who can shoot more accurately. First shot. All right, that was the first shot. Now bear in mind, we have not taken any warm-up shots, so you're seeing the first shots of the day. First shots in probably over a week. All right, here we go. All right, so first round, not too great. We both shot pretty badly, um, but I got the dub first round. To me, are we gonna do best of three rounds? Yeah, let's do best of three. All right, we're gonna do three rounds. That was round one. Like I said, this gun is not maxed out. I've got 14.5 mil bands, and they're not pre-tensioned quite enough, so. Still shoots accurately, and it's doing just fine on the rigs, for the most part. You know, I've lost a couple fish, so I could probably tighten them a little bit, but. It's doing all right. It's pretty rare that I actually do shoot at a max wrap anyway, so that's why I'm not really too concerned about it. But uh, other than that, accuracy and the lack of recoil is pretty good. All right, so Fisher is trending left. I shot a little bit to the right. Maybe we can compensate a little bit and get a little bit better accuracy. Let's try to hit the end here. That is the goal. All right, well that was round two. I got about within that far from the bullseye, so not too bad. But with a little bit of practice, you can get pretty dang accurate with the Rob Allen, so. Fisher is gonna take his third shot now. You're hitting a tight group, but to the left. Just after a few shots, I kind of got accustomed, and I actually had a better, I had better shooting form. If that makes any sense on that shot. Arm was locked out, tilted, and overall, just the aim was better. All right, all right. Well, that will conclude our challenge. We just did three shots there. Last one, I finally got it on the bullseye. And if you do practice shooting in the pool, guys, it seriously helps a lot. Just like you saw there, you will get more and more accurate the more you practice and learn how your gun shoots and you'll be able to kind of compensate for recoil and just aim better. We're gonna have to keep shooting. We're probably gonna keep shooting after this video and get Fisher hitting right on because he was grouping 
like consistently to the left. And that's actually really common for right-handed shooters. Left-handed shooters would shoot to the right. But for me, in my experience, I used to have that issue when there was too much recoil. If you're a right-handed shooter and you get that recoil, your wrist is gonna deflect this way. And whenever the handle of the spear gun deflects, the shaft is leaving the spear gun and the tail end gets pushed to the right and then your shaft's gonna go to the left. Same thing with a left-handed shooter. Recoil goes like this. Spear gun tip deflects to the left, pushes the back end of the shaft that way as well, and then the point actually goes to the right. So that's actually a really common mishap with spear guns and uh, poor recoil management. That's one of the main reasons I use a roller now. If you are shooting right or left, just kind of think about that. And one of the main things that I, I do to adjust if there is a lot of recoil on the spear gun is whenever I shoot, instead of holding the gun straight up and down, angle it. So kind of like the gangster pistol aiming style. Just put the spear gun sideways a little bit. Like instead of putting it straight up, angle it inward. I used to have a King Venom, uh, which had an insane amount of recoil. And one of the main things I did to compensate for that and keep my shots accurate was to tilt my hand. So just something to keep in mind if you are having problems with accuracy shooting your spear gun. Um, but yeah, that is the end of the pool segment. We're gonna be inside brewing up some goodness. I got a cup of ice here, typical smoothie. We're gonna put some coffee creamer in there. Slight dosage. Next, the secret sauce. We're gonna put in some soy. Mustard. How are you feeling right now? Not looking forward to it. Slight dose of salsa. Gotta have a little bit of crunch in there. Check it out. Quite the mixture in there. All right, here you go, Buster. Come on, buddy. Thank you. What happens when you lose? That wasn't even a whole dude. swig, dude. That wasn't a shot. It's horrible. <laughs> it's so, I'm gonna puke everywhere, dude. It's That's horrible. fine. It's horrible. Come on. 